Hey everybody, this is Brad Woodling, Managing Director of Place to Be Nation, and I have a special show here for everyone today. I want to bring in my friend Charles Williams from Pro Wrestling Only. Charles, how are you? I'm doing great, Brad. How are you? I'm, I am doing really well, and I'm excited to talk to you today. Um, you know, Place to Be Nation and Pro Wrestling Only have kind of been hand-in-hand hand since the very beginning. It kind of goes back to some certain podcasts that were tied into the forums, and then we've worked closely on different projects over the year. We've had the privilege to be able to publish some great works that you've done, either articles, which we'll talk a little bit uh, about today, and also, you know, your gigantic rankings of the 90s matches, which were, uh, you know, huge hits for the site. And so we've enjoyed a great relationship with you. And why I wanted to have this call today and wanted to share with everyone here is that on July 1st, Pro Wrestling Only is going to be relaunched as a true wrestling website. And so today we're going to talk with Charles and learn a little bit more what that's like. You know, maybe you're not on the forums, maybe you're not on social media, and that's fine. So, Charles, tell me a little bit here for everybody here. What what was behind your motivation here to kind of start and take this forum, which is an incredibly popular forum, right? And we've all been on there, and there's a lot of great posters, and kind of turn it into a website. It's something that's been in my mind for a long time, uh, probably since I visited allmusic.com uh, for the first time many years ago. And I remember thinking when I looked at that site and you were able to get reviews for just about everything, and then you could you know, kind of narrow things down by genre or um, whatever criteria you wanted as a reader, I thought, wow, that would be so awesome to have in wrestling. And in wrestling, I feel like we were very limited as far as the number of reviewers that are out there, I mean, there are some, and in some ways, I guess there are a lot of people, but there aren't a lot of people that are devoted to it full time that are trying to be kind of high profile about it. Um, and so that's what I'm trying to do. Sure. So, and like you said, so there's a lot of wrestling websites out there, but none that, you know, PWO has a, a certain, you know, heavy historical slant to it. And then we talk about current things there too. So what kind of, kind of maybe we'll start with what kind of content you, you will be on the website and then we'll talk about kind of what uh, what it all entails and what the scope of it looks like sure sure so the content on the site uh there will be daily content and then there will be weekly content and monthly content so let's talk about daily content sure that will be five match reviews <clears throat> from a specific day in history so let's pretend that today is July 1st, and it might be for some people who are listening to this, mm -hmm. um, then there will be five matches on the website posted that have happened on July 1st during previous years. So that will be there no matter what, every day. Just can know that at a minimum, even if nothing else is posted, you'll be able to read five long-form match reviews at uh, Pro Wrestling Only. As far as other content... Um, we will, I will be doing kind of a weekly roundup. So if something's getting buzz or something looks interesting to me, then um, I will try to capture all those matches too. And then those will probably just be released incrementally. Um, and then I'll be doing an editor's notes also on a weekly basis. So I'll be doing okay. things like um, <clears throat> I'll be kind of explaining like, hey, this is coming up and I'm looking forward to it. I just read this interview on this side and thought it was really interesting. You should check it out. Um, things are going well so far. Just kind of a check-in with uh, the readers. Sure. So, yeah. And now, will this be – so you talked about, you know, five matches a day that are coming from the past. But what, uh, what kind of lens are you going to put on the current uh, landscape of professional wrestling? Um, it'll be just pretty much the same lens, I guess. I'll, I'll be doing a weekly um, – update as opposed to a daily update so in the previous week like i guess in this past week it would have been um you know whatever matches people were talking about during that week um i'd just keep track of that and then when the time comes it'll probably be it, it, i guess it could fluctuate what day of the week it is but when the time comes um i'll review each of those matches in the same way with the same attention and mindset that i would an older match okay Great. Now, I kind of hinted before that, you know, sometimes maybe there's more hardcore fans in, in general online or, and maybe with at, at PWO, but how would you, you know, what would you say um, kind of your audience is here? You know, who, who what, what kind of knowledge do you need to have to, to enjoy and get something out of the site and, and ultimately help support the site? Well, I think it 
should be a broad audience. That's what I'm hoping for. So I, I think that, um, you know, I'm not really writing with a specific type of fan in mind. Uh, I'm assuming that everyone needs some degree of explanation. Uh, so I'm providing that. I'm not assuming that everyone knows the history of Japanese wrestling or um, the uh, signature moves of luchadors or anything like that. So this is really written as a baseline um, for someone who's familiarizing themselves with um with the wrestlers or with the match. Now that's not saying that if you have seen more footage or even if you've seen this match in particular, that it's not valuable because it still um, is a perspective, but, but I'm really, I, I want to appeal to as many people as possible. Um, so if you're someone who maybe you haven't been crazy about the message board because there's so much focus on classic content. Yeah. I, I don't think you have to worry about that here or because you felt like you didn't know quite as much as some of the people that post there. I, I that's not really a concern here because, um, it, it, and I should talk about, I guess while we're talking about this, what type of match reviews they will be. So sure. it won't be the typical play by play. Um, this move gets to this move gets to again, you know, that sort of thing. It'll be more of an overall step back looking in at the match it's setting, you know, where did it take place? What was the time and place in which it happened? Um, who was involved? What was the significance of it? And then also the body of the work in the ring. So all of those boxes, I guess, are getting checked. Okay. And now what are your kind of tastes in wrestling overall? So we've talked now first about, you know, again, so it's a broader audience. And I think you did. Uh, I, I loved your explanation on who, who you're going to be aiming for there. But where do your tastes lie in professional wrestling and and does the reader need to kind of be in tune with that to be able to find value? Um, I think people can disagree with me. I'll answer your second question first. Uh, I think people can disagree with me and still find it useful. Um, I'll use Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer as an example. I um, agree with him a lot of the time and disagree with him a lot of the time. But I can always tell when I'm reading a match because I've familiarized myself so much with how he writes that it, it, when he's describing a match, I pretty much know if I'm going to like it or not. And to me, that's, that's what I'm aiming to do. I'm aiming to get to a point where, you know, I'm writing about this match and maybe you haven't seen it and you can tell just from reading about it, uh, this isn't going to be my thing. I'm going to skip it. Or, um, this sounds like something that I would really like. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> And now you talked about what kind of the recaps are going to look like. What is? Are you going to be using any type of specific uh, rating system or maybe a new one? Or, or you mentioned Dave Meltzer before. What does that look like on your end? Uh, no snowflakes. No um, snowflakes, okay. No snowflakes, but I'm not opposed to that system. I mean, I've used it myself for a long time. But I would like something a little bit more precise so that it's very easy to make comparisons. Uh, so I'll be doing a scale of 1 to 10 with um, a tenth of a point as a possible rating. So you can get like a 9.1 or a 6.4. Um, there will be an explanation of how matches are rated on the site. But the idea there is, let's say that you have seen some matches that you've really enjoyed. And, I, you know, maybe in your mind it's a 10. Maybe I gave it an 8, just as an example. Mm -hmm. You can look at other matches that also received an 8. And, um, and you can see, you, you can kind of establish for yourself where you would expect that to fall for you. Sure. Okay. And, and I'm sure you mentioned earlier with, with, uh, the music site that I'd imagine, uh, a lot of your, your initial goal here is going to be too, is it? So if I find like a wrestler that you write about, I'll be able to kind of drill down into what you've also written about him already and maybe something more even historical within your, within the site. Is that, is that what you're kind of envisioning? It is. Yes, it is. Yes. So, um, if you're reading like the very first review that we're posting on the website is a Harley race versus Terry Funk match, um, from 1977. So when you're reading that review, if you want to see a list of other Terry Funk matches that I've reviewed, you'll be able to click something. Um, ditto Harley race. Now, I'll, Obviously, that will take some time to build. So on the first day, you won't be able to do that. But over time, as more content is added to the site, uh, then that will be an option. 
Um, but not only that, not just the wrestlers, but also, okay, what other matches do we have from Houston Wrestling, which is where that match takes place? Or what other matches have I reviewed from WWE, if you happen to be reading a, a review of something from WWE? So um, I want it to be not necessarily sortable, but where you can find anything based on anything, I guess. So even the title that's at stake... Um, if you want to see what other NWA world title matches I've reviewed, which is what this is, um, then you should have somewhere to click where you can see, okay, here's the other title matches and here's how this compares as far as the overall rating to those. Nice. I think that's good too, is you, you'll kind of, uh, you know, you've built a reputation already, but people will be able to, uh, they'll be able to follow along with that, you know, and, and kind of see how you rate different, you know, heavyweight matches, and they'll kind of know your style, which I think helps build, uh, you know, and kind of breeds the, uh, the the commitment, and people like to see what you like to write. Um, so what do you, so, you know, like you mentioned earlier, there's a lot of wrestling websites out there, but you have a, you know, a lot of cachet coming in with this forum, and a lot of knowledge, like I said, from the many pieces that we've published. So what do you see right now as kind of your biggest challenges to this new endeavor? Um, I think it's making sure that people understand that the website is not the message board. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously I want everyone to have the best experience possible on the message board. And I feel like most people do, but at the same time, if you, if you didn't have a great experience or if you read the form and don't really feel like you would have a voice there and so you don't sign up for it, that doesn't mean that the website won't do anything for you. So, um, so I, I think that will be a little bit of a challenge. I think also um, proving that this can work just in general. It's kind of like when WWE launched the network itself in 2014. Um, you had all of these other industries watching them to see how it did. And once it was proven a success, then they jumped on the bandwagon also and started offering streaming services. So that's kind of how I see this. It's the first that's really, I guess, a fan site that's actually running it like a business yeah. and um and so that's it's new it's never been attempted to my knowledge it's never really been done we've had reporters doing um doing coverage of things and including match reviews and that but we've never had someone just solely dedicated to um what happens bell to bell or what happens in booking and in uh, characters um i'm not focusing on business at all okay that's good. Good to point out, and and I don't want to leave that as a negative question here because I'm a positive guy too. So, I, and I kind of hinted a little bit at it, but I want to hear it from you. Is you know, so this is a new model, but what's going in your favor here going into this, and and why is this going to be a success? Um, I have, <laughs> I'm my toughest critic, and I've really been holding myself to a very high standard when it comes to the content. And so I think the content is a huge plus. Um, I also think that I do have uh, a decent amount of goodwill, either me personally or for wrestling only as a site has some built in goodwill. And so there are people who are excited about this, who are enthusiastic about it. And I think that, um, you know, hopefully that's contagious uh, I also think that there are some unique ideas that I have for making this work that maybe other people haven't really thought of or tried. And you'll see what those are just the longer the site is around. Um, but I feel confident. I'm, I'm actually not afraid at all to fail. Um, I, it could happen, but um, if it does, I'll just go do something else. I just I feel like it it's worse to look back in 30 years or 40 years and say, gosh, what, you know, how would that have gone? Why didn't I do that? Or even worse, someone else does it. And, you sure, know, sure. Has a huge success. Um, that could have been me. So that, I think it's more important to try it and give it everything I have than it is to succeed even. Sure. Um, although I do want success and everything I do will be geared toward being successful. Fantastic. And you mentioned the readers and the built-in cachet that you have. So what can people, what can those mainstays of PWO now, like what, what can we do to help support you? Oh, there will be a lot of things. Um, I'll start with, I guess, the options that will be available pretty early on. Uh, there will be ads on the website, as always. Um, if you want to click through and look at those ads from our sponsors, that would be a huge help. 
Um, I will be putting um, a tier system on Patreon. If it's not up already, you'll be seeing that. Um, so there, are, those are ways that you can support the site. Um, also, just spread the word. If you read something on the site that you like, share it, um, tweet it, uh, you know, tell your grandmother, whatever you want to do. Just uh, the more people that are looking at the site, the better. Uh, and also sign up for our e-newsletter. Um, every week I'm going to send kind of a recap of everything that's been posted on the site, primarily because it's so much content. So when you think about five match reviews a day, that's just at a baseline without anything else added at all. That's 25 articles per week. And each match review so far that I've done is averaged between 750 and 1,000 words. So, um, so these are full-length articles. And so if you're getting 25 of those each week, it may be kind of hard to keep up with. Um, so definitely subscribe to um, our email list so that you can get kind of a recap of everything we've covered throughout the week in those. Great. Yeah, and I, and I know you're very active on social media. Where can different – where can listeners find you if they want to continue to get updates about the site now that it's uh, you know just about to go live or, or maybe you're listening when it has gone live here after July 1st? Um, you can find me on Twitter at ProRes Only. That's P R O R E S W R E S Only. Uh, I'm also on Facebook, ProWrestlingOnly.com. If you search for that, it should come right up. Um, I'm on Instagram as Pro Wrestling Only. Just one word. You notice I don't very much with my username. That's good. And, um, <laughs> You've got it locked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I'll be on uh, YouTube as well okay. as, as Pro Wrestling Only. I actually haven't set that up yet, but. Uh, it will be available soon. And now, so, what, are, what are you providing on on Instagram? On Instagram, I'm really just kind of um, providing snapshots of what I happen to be writing about that day. So maybe not even what's posted. Uh, so if you're someone who wants to kind of see what I might be reviewing next, then Instagram is probably a great place to follow me because you know if I'm writing now about something that's going live on the site in two weeks. Uh, the Instagram is just a place to do a snapshot of whatever's on my mind at that moment. Sure. So you'll know, oh, okay, he's going to be doing a review of this soon. And so if, if you want to kind of see the future, uh, Instagram is the best place to follow me. If you want to catch me in the moment, then that would be Twitter. And if you want to just be notified every time that something gets you know, posted to the side or any time that we have a question for our readers, then Facebook would be the way to go. Okay, and you mentioned YouTube and something that you're going to be setting up. What kind of content do you envision uh, making to that platform? Uh, there will be audio content. I have a long-term vision there, so there may not be a lot of uh, audio content at first, but there will be some, and uh, that will just keep expanding. I, what I would like to do is eventually do match reviews on YouTube that are separate and unique from the written match reviews that go to ProWrestlingOnly.com. And that maybe even, you know, within the fair use laws uh, that surround copyrighted footage have, you know, a, a few seconds or a few moments like on the screen um, against my voice, kind of explaining what I liked or didn't like about it. So for people who used to watch like the Leonard Maltin or the um, Siskel and Ebert shows, sure. it would be like that in very quick digestible form. So if you want to hear, you know, what did you think of this match? Tell me in two minutes, you know, or something like that, then that's. The, the type of videos that I want to put on YouTube. Okay. Great. Great. So with that said, then Charles, uh, what, what would you like to close with here and anything else you want to say to prospective listeners? And again, you know, I wanted to stress earlier here that, you know, these are going to be out on our audio feeds because not everybody reads forums and not everybody is on different phases of social media. And we wanted to help spread the word here um, at place to be nation about your new endeavor. So what, uh, what would you like to leave our listeners with today? Well, I, I would just say that I'm overwhelmed in a lot of ways from the support and the offers to help me, you know, get the word out that I've received so far from the people that I know well. So if you're one of those people and you're listening to this, thank you very much. Um, this would not be possible if not only, you know, the people who've reached out to me, but the people who post on the message board regularly who may not have, um, I couldn't do any of this without all of you. Uh, ProWrestlingOnly.com means something to an extent because uh, of the people that post there. It's not a reflection of me as much as it is of the entire community. 
So uh, if you've been along for the ride, I really appreciate that. If you're coming on board, uh, what I would say to you is that I hope you enjoy it. I think there's a chance that you can be exposed to a lot of different styles and a lot of wrestlers that you might not have seen before. Um, or even if you have seen them, maybe looking at them in a new light or seeing matches of theirs that, you know, are, are being recommended to you that you've never even heard of or didn't know existed. So that's really where I hope to come in. Also, I think uh, if you're someone who subscribes to streaming services like the WWE Network, for example, or some of the other popular ones like New Japan World and High Spots and that type of thing, um, it will be possible to go on the website and see all the matches that I've reviewed that are available on your streaming service. So, um, so that's, that's pretty much what I would say to everyone. Just if you've been with me, thank you. And if you haven't, I hope you'll join me. Great. Well, thank you, Charles. And again, uh, I want to thank everybody for listening. And on July 1st, be sure to check out ProWrestlingOnly.com. And again, you can find Charles and Pro Wrestling Only on all those different social sites and get updates along the way. So, Charles, it was great talking to you, and best of luck, my friend. Thank you so much, Brad.